I'm the CEO at White Horse Village and I'm here today to share my Italian heritage with you. I'm going to make something very simple. It's an antipasto, which we shared with my family the whole time I was growing up. As you know, Italians are just surrounded by food all the time, and especially on Sunday when we shared a lot of the traditions with my aunts and my uncles, my grandparents, and um, various other uh, members of my family, as well as anyone who was in the neighborhood could stop over for dinner. Grandma always made more for everyone's guardian angel. So we had twice the amount of food we could ever possibly consume. Most of the time it ended up in my lunch bag for the rest of the week. Today I'm going to make an antipasto which is really simple. Um, all you need to do is take your favorite green and cut it up. I used romaine just because it's easy and I like the dark color. I don't especially like the taste. Um, my grandma used to use some arugula and some radicchio and also some iceberg lettuce. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do is dress this for you. It's very colorful. Um, it could actually be a full meal, which we sometimes had, uh, with a bowl of soup, homemade, of course, by my mother or my grandmother. And incidentally, all the men cooked, too. It was just a tradition we grew up with. Whoever got in the kitchen first, went into the refrigerator and started the whole process and everyone pitched in. Um, my parents also owned a restaurant that they bought from my grandparents and it was an Italian restaurant so my sister and I were raised in that tradition. We cooked all the time. So let me start again with a basic uh, lettuce here and a decorative plate would be nice. This particular plate is from Italy and um, I think they make a nice presentation especially when you get down to the bottom. The lettuce is almost peripheral to the rest of the dressings that go on it. And speaking of dressing, in the Italian tradition, we would typically put a cruet of oil and vinegar on the table, much smaller than this one, and everyone would dress it to their liking. So let's start building the antipasto, and you can get very creative in your own kitchen. What I like to do first is to take the meats, and it's usually um, an, it an Italian pancetta or uh, which I sometimes cook up so it's nice and crisp, or I can use a good um, uh, Asiago provolone, Genoa salami, sopracetta, any of those really good cured Italian meats, Italian ham, as I said, but pancetta, and prosciutto. So, what grandmom used to do, and I'm not going to do here because it's too time intensive, um, we'll show it to you later when it's complete, is you can roll a piece of provolone, for, ex for instance, and put it in the side of the plate and just go all the way around and make it very attractive by placing the meat and the cheese around the plate. Just use your own um, artistry to do that. Now that we have all of our meats and cheeses assembled, we can work on the vegetables. Let me show you what I have here. I have some artichoke hearts and these are just plain ordered artichoke hearts from a can. You can also use the marinated artichoke hearts. They work very well too. Some fresh tomatoes. Any size works. Just use your own creativity to decide how you want to cut them. Hard boiled eggs, which we'll cut up and we'll put around the plate. We have some anchovies. Not Many people are not a fan of anchovies. I happen to like them very much, but you can um, crush them up and put them in your dressing. I've done that too with some chopped garlic and some fresh pepper and salt. I prefer the kosher salt. Um, I just think it has a better flavor. Plain marinated mushrooms. If you can take an eight ounce um, uh, container of mushrooms and just do them with uh, oil and vinegar and again garlic, which is the uh, national food of Italy. Uh, make sure you use a good grade olive oil because it really makes a difference as well as your salt and pepper. We have here some um, peppers that have been um, pimentoed, it looks like. We'll put that on the salad as well. I like to roast my peppers, I do them whole. Uh, it seems that frequently the chefs on television make a big deal out of doing roasted peppers and putting them in a bag, and that's not how my grandmom did it. She put a whole pepper in the oven, pricked it with a fork, and put some olive oil on it and just let it go. And then when it comes out, you peel the skin and it's very simple. That's how I do it because it's easy. But you can also buy the uh, prepared ones to put on too. Capers, one of my favorites. Um, in a real Italian antipasto, you can go to the Italian grocery stores and you can actually purchase 
Italian tuna fish, which is packed in olive oil and frequently has capers in it. Um, if it doesn't, you can mash the capers into the tuna fish. Some of my aunts have done that and then put it around the, the antipasto, but I'm keeping everything separate and just trying to give you some ideas as we go along. So let's work on the veggies. I have no idea where I'm going to put them, but I'm just going to place them randomly. And again, use your own artistry. So these are actually tomatoes from the White Horse Village Garden. Um, I thank staff who worked so hard on that all summer. We can just place them randomly here um, and have it look very decorative. And whatever's left, we can put in the middle later. Just do it the way you like. We can do the same with the artichoke quarters. Put them in the little slots. It's like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. But it's fun and it looks very pretty on the table and people seem to enjoy it. So we'll do a little bit of that. We'll take some of these beautiful mushrooms that I actually don't want to pick up. I'm just going to randomly put them down. I don't like to touch oily food with my hands. So let's put this whole bowl down. And you know, don't be afraid if you're buying marinated artichokes in a jar or if you've marinated some, um, some mushrooms. Don't waste the dressing. Just, just randomly pour it over the antipasto because, as my mom used to say, it all goes down the same pipe. So let's do this. It smells so good. And now we'll take some of the roasted peppers. Again, I prefer roasting my own. Um, but I'll put these on for some decoration and color. They are actually pretty good. But when you roast, especially in the summer, when you roast the orange and the, um, and the yellow ones, you get such magnificent color. This one's starting to look like Christmas with the red and green. But we always had antipasto at Christmas. Now we'll do some, we'll do some hard boiled eggs and we'll quarter them. You can see how beautiful this is getting to be with all of the color. We've cut up the, um, or we've quartered the hard boiled eggs and it just adds such a delightful look to it. What I'll do now um, is some anchovies. I would say use these sparingly. I know that um, my grandmother used to just pile them in the corner so that all the grandchildren could pick them off after they um, did their round of ooze. Um, so let's do that. And I love the taste of anchovies and capers and tuna fish. So let's put some capers in here now. We'll build a little mountain for those that love capers. And for those who don't, I'm really very sorry. I love them, so they're going to go all over the salad. And you can put as many as you like. Um, if, you're, if your uh, family or friends likes capers, then just, just do it. And now some of the tuna fish. Um, I would suggest you get tuna packed in oil. And in the Italian section, there are a number of, I think, Progresso and Cento. And um, a couple of others have some really, really tasty tuna. But again, it's packed in oil. So let's just put this randomly around the plate. You want to make sure that there's enough um, so that everyone can have a taste of all of the different flavors that antipasto um, and antipasto creates. Put a little bit more. Excuse my fingers, but this is the best way to do it. And finally, um, I do love prosciutto. I think it's very, very tasty. Um, and this you can almost never make decorative. Um, so I'll just put some in little piles. Those that like it can just pick the pile. And um, I think it's quite a treat. I like it in eggs even. It's wonderful. 
You can also add radishes. I don't particularly like them, so I didn't request them as part of the um, as part of this uh, this plate today. You can also buy a jar of Italian giardinera, which is all marinated Italian. Well, they're not really Italian. They're marinated vegetables. And that has um, uh, celery and onions and um, cauliflower and carrots. And you could also use that and part of the juice that it's packed in because that gives it flavor too. My mother loved that and always did it, but she always bought the jar that was um, spicy. So I chose not to do that today either. The other thing you can do um, as a final coup de grace is, is take uh, a good piece of Asiago or Locatelli and you can shave it and you can make a decorative um, uh, curling of cheese on the top or you can chunk it. I like it chunked um, because I like a lot of it. So we'll chunk this up a little. No pattern, it's just random. My knife skills leave a lot to be desired, so for all of the chefs that are watching today, and for the safety committee at work, I didn't do this. So take some of this, and randomly pile this too. So, here you have it my version of uh, Sunday dinner, antipasto, enjoyed by many in our family and hopefully enjoyed by you too.